Today we'll be starting off the usual way, with Starship updates to get you excited about the present. It's no longer the future, yo. Then we'll check in on Dragon as NASA and SpaceX enter the calm before the Demo 2 storm. Take a look at the upcoming Starlink launch, then finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. All right, let's take it back to last Saturday morning. After SpaceX removed the Raptor engine, number 18, from SN4, they filled her back up once again for another cryo test. This time it was scrubbed soon after filling began, due to issues with the weather. Anyway, it doesn't matter, later that same day SpaceX made another go at it, and this time she passed with flying colors. Getting the pressure up to 7.5 bar, which is good enough for unmanned orbital space flights. So, a couple days later, a different Raptor engine, SN20, was transported back down Highway 4 to Starship and has since been mounted on the rocket. Somebody really needs to get that lift to baby on board sign. It's precious cargo, man. But a single off-center Raptor engine wasn't all SN4 received this week. Additional COPVs were mounted on the side of the vessel, which lead me to believe they are most likely for holding nitrogen gas for ACS thrusters. Those will be needed for the upcoming 150 meter hop. But first, SN4 will perform another static fire with this new engine, making it its third static fire overall. It was supposed to happen yesterday, according to notices that went out to locals in Boca Chica Village, but that was canceled. And as it currently stands, we can expect that static fire to happen sometime today, and if not today, then definitely this weekend. You can keep an eye out for that on that Padre stream. Her twin sister ship, SN5, went through a growth spurt this week. Now she is nearly identical to SN4 after having her propellant tanks stacked in the high bay. But unlike her predecessor, will soon be receiving a nose cone, most likely within the week. Then we have every reason to expect that SN5 will also get some fins, as well as all the fancy electronics to control them. Because if all goes according to plan, 20 clicks up and 20 clicks down will be her destiny. But let's remain cautiously optimistic and say June for that. And if that's a success, then maybe SN6 could be the darling vessel to try for orbit, which by the way is already being built and could begin stacking very soon. Elon is about to turn his vision for a Starship fleet into a reality, which could look something like this according to Musk, pretty close. It will look absurdly tall and have a lot more ground support equipment, which makes sense due to the fact this beast will have double the thrust of a Saturn V. But speaking of launching Americans from America on American rockets, it's time to get super excited about Demo 2, because we are officially less than two weeks away from liftoff. NASA tweeted out this video featuring astronauts Bob and Doug, who are now quarantine squared and ready to make history. Certainly when you go through the, the launch day preparations, there's a lot of moments that kind of stand out to you. When the engine's light, you know you are going and you know you're going somewhere pretty fast. When the engine shut off, you go from three Gs to zero Gs instantaneously. And things start floating and, and I remember distinctly just thinking what just happened. Same thing happens when you get to space station. It's kind of a defining moment when you get the hatches back open. By sharing this experience uh, with SpaceX and creating another partner that has the same capability, I think we really set the future up to continue to blossom. This will be the first time humans have ridden on the Falcon 9, even though it's flown many, many times. And so just Taking in that experience and, and the sounds and all those things that we can relate to future crews is gonna be something important to do too. Think about this for a minute. This is a really big deal, guys. The successor to the space shuttle is something we have been waiting for for a long time, and it's finally happening. And the best part is, for me at least, this time we're going back using traditional rockets like the days of Apollo, an era of American history I would have loved to have witnessed. But these days, I'm even more thankful to be here experiencing all of this. Jim Bridenstine also shared the first images of Bob and Doug's ride they'll be taking to Pad 39A, NASA's version of a tricked out Tesla Model X. Prepare yourselves for all the nerdy imitators you're about to encounter on the freeway. SpaceX also shared a link to a Dragon simulation game where the user attempts to dock the capsule to the International Space Station. I gave it a go, and after days of just trying to reach the space station, somehow I found myself at the moon. Definitely not nerminal. If you would like to try, watch the rest of this video, and then maybe watch it a second time, and then click on the appropriate link in the description below. Good luck, any flight game without a joystick is rigged. But before we get to May 27th and the Dragon launch, first we have another Starlink mission to enjoy, on May 17th at 4 in the morning. The booster for Starlink 8 has successfully undergone its static fire at the Cape, which is great considering the fact it's a notable booster. This will only be the second instance one has flown five times, and could be the first time a booster makes a fifth landing. If you remember back to the sixth Starlink launch, 
That was the only other booster to fly five times, and because of an early engine shutdown, it didn't make the drone ship. Mornings are the devil, but I will be here live so you have somebody to enjoy the launch with. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. It's about time we feature the world's only amateur crowdfunded human space program, Copenhagen Suborbitals. Based out of Denmark, this volunteer team of about 55 rocket engineers was founded in 2008 and is on a mission to put one of their own across the Kármán line on a suborbital spaceflight. To date, they have successfully flown five home-built rockets and two mock-up space capsules, which gives them the accolade of launching the most powerful amateur rocket ever flown, using a launch pad based out in international waters. And the rocket that will launch their first passenger to space is named Spica, standing at 12 to 14 meters tall with a diameter just shy of one meter. This means the astronaut won't ride on it in the traditional belly-up seated position, but seated vertically. Copenhagen Suborbitals builds their own liquid-fueled engines, and Spica will use the BPM-100, the world's most powerful crowd-funded rocket engine, and it will run on ethanol and LOX as propellant. This first man launch isn't expected to happen for a few years. Until then, you can be a part of their exciting journey by checking out their link in the description below and donating to their cause. Yesterday, I interviewed Mads, their parachute lead, for my upcoming eccentric documentary on rocket shoots, which should release just prior to Demo 2, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss it, do you? Parachutes are fun. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but thank you for stopping by. And thank you, eccentric members, for your contributions to the channel. If you'd like more rocket stuff in your life, I can make that happen. Check out the Patreon link below. Please do have a nominal weekend, but don't do anything I would do. And I'll see you at an unreasonable hour on Sunday morning. Until that time, Godspeed.